Lesson 5 Excuses to Avoid Mission Sabbath Afternoon October 28 Nineveh, wicked though it had become, was not wholly given over to evil. He who beholdeth all the sons of men, Psalm 33, verse 13, and seeth every precious thing, Job chapter 28, verse 10, perceived in that city many who were reaching out after something better and higher, and who, if granted opportunity to learn of the living God, would put away their evil deeds and worship him. And so in his wisdom, God revealed himself to them in an unmistakable manner to lead them, if possible, to repentance. The instrument chosen for this work was the prophet Jonah, the son of Amittai. To him came the word of the Lord, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Jonah chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. As the prophet thought of the difficulties and seeming impossibilities of this commission, he was tempted to question the wisdom of the call. From a human viewpoint, it seemed as if nothing could be gained by proclaiming such a message in that proud city. He forgot for the moment that the God whom he served was all-wise and all-powerful. While he hesitated, still doubting, Satan overwhelmed him with discouragement. The prophet was seized with a great dread, and he rose up to flee unto Tarshish. Going to Joppa and finding there a ship ready to sail, he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them. Verse 3. Prophets and Kings, pages 265 and 266. In giving light to his people anciently, God did not work exclusively through any one class. Daniel was a prince of Judah, Isaiah also was of the royal line, David was a shepherd boy, Amos a herdsman, Zechariah a captive from Babylon, Elisha a tiller of the soil. The Lord raised up as his representatives prophets and princes, the noble and the lowly, and taught them the truths to be given to the world. To everyone who becomes a partaker of his grace, the Lord appoints a work for others. Individually, we are to stand in our lot and place saying, Here am I, send me. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Upon the minister of the word, the missionary nurse, the Christian physician, the individual Christian, whether he be merchant or farmer, professional man or mechanic, the responsibility rests upon all. It is our work to reveal to men the gospel of their salvation. Every enterprise in which we engage should be a means to this end. Those who take up their appointed work will not only be a blessing to others, but they will themselves be blessed. The consciousness of duty well done will have a reflex influence upon their own souls. The despondent will forget their despondency. The weak will become strong, the ignorant intelligent, and all will find an unfailing helper in him who has called them. The Ministry of Healing Page 148. Sunday, October 29. Our Excuses. Fear. More people than we think are longing to find the way to Christ. Those who preach the last message of mercy should bear in mind that Christ is to be exalted as the sinner's refuge. Some ministers think that it is not necessary to preach repentance and faith. They take it for granted that their hearers are acquainted with the gospel and that matters of a different nature must be presented in order to hold their attention. But many people are sadly ignorant in regard to the plan of salvation. They need more instruction upon this all-important subject than upon any other. Theoretical discourses are essential that people may see the chain of truth link after link, uniting in a perfect whole. But no discourse should ever be preached without presenting Christ and Him crucified as the foundation of the gospel. Evangelism, pages 185 and 186. In the darkest hours, under circumstances the most forbidding, 
the Christian believer may keep his soul stayed upon the source of all light and power. Day by day, through faith in God, his hope and courage may be renewed. The just shall live by his faith. In the service of God, there need be no despondency, no wavering, no fear. The Lord will more than fulfill the highest expectations of those who put their trust in Him. He will give them the wisdom their varied necessities demand. Prophets and Kings, page 386. Much depends on the unceasing activity of those who are true and loyal, and for this reason, Satan puts forth every possible effort to thwart the divine purpose to be wrought out through the obedient. He causes some to lose sight of their high and holy mission and to become satisfied with the pleasures of this life. He leads them to settle down at ease or, for the sake of greater worldly advantages, to remove from places where they might be a power for good. Others he causes to flee in discouragement from duty because of opposition or persecution. But all such are regarded by heaven with tenderest pity. To every child of God whose voice the enemy of souls had succeeded in silencing, the question is addressed, What doest thou here? I commissioned you to go into all the world and preach the gospel to prepare a people for the day of God. Why are you here? Who sent you? Those who realize even in a limited degree what redemption means to them and to their fellow men will comprehend in some measure the vast needs of humanity. Their hearts will be moved to compassion as they see the moral and spiritual destitution of thousands who are under the shadow of a terrible doom in comparison with which physical suffering fades into nothingness. Prophets and Kings, pages 171 and 172. Monday, October 30. Our Excuses, False Views If, when the call first came to him, Jonah had stopped to consider calmly, he might have known how foolish would be any effort on his part to escape the responsibility placed upon him. But not for long was he permitted to go on undisturbed in his mad flight. The Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. Verses 4 and 5. Prophets and Kings, page 267. Establish your hearts in the belief that God knows of all the trials and difficulties you will encounter in the warfare against evil. For God is dishonored when any soul belittles his power by talking unbelief. This world is God's great field of labor. He has purchased those that dwell on it with the blood of his only begotten Son, and he means that his message of mercy shall go to everyone. Those who are commissioned to do this work will be tested and tried, but they are always to remember that God is near to strengthen and uphold them. He does not ask us to depend upon any broken reed. We are not to look for human aid. God forbid that we should place man where God should be. The Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Reflecting Christ, page 352. When God opens the way for the accomplishment of a certain work and gives assurance of success, the chosen instrumentality must do all in his power to bring about the promised result. In proportion to the enthusiasm and perseverance with which the work is carried forward will be the success given. God can work miracles for his people only as they act their part with untiring energy. He calls for men of devotion to his work, men of moral courage, with ardent love for souls, and with a zeal that never flags. Such workers will find no task too arduous, no prospect too hopeless. 
They will labor on undaunted until apparent defeat is turned into glorious victory. Not even prison walls nor the martyr stake beyond will cause them to swerve from their purpose of laboring together with God for the upbuilding of his kingdom. Prophets and Kings, page 263. Those who have been most successful in soul winning were men and women who did not pride themselves on their ability, but who in humility and faith sought to help those about them. Jesus did this very work. He came close to those whom he desired to reach. How often, with a few gathered about him, he gave his lessons, and one by one the passers-by paused to listen, until a great multitude heard with wonder and awe the words of the heaven-sent teacher. Gospel Workers, page 194. Tuesday, October 31. Our Excuses. Inconvenience. Every soul who is saved must surrender his own plans and follow where Christ leads the way. The understanding must be yielded up to Christ for him to cleanse and refine and purify. This will always be done when we receive aright the teachings of Christ. Oh, how much we need a more intimate acquaintance with Him. We need to enter into His purpose and to carry out His will, saying with the whole heart, Lord, what wilt Thou have me to do? We should keep ever before us the fact that time is short. Iniquity is increasing on every hand. The righteous are set as lights in the world. Through them the glory of God is to be revealed to the world. This Day with God Page 322. If you are in communion with Christ, you will place his estimate upon every human being. You will feel for others the same deep love that Christ has felt for you. Then you will be able to win, not drive, to attract, not repulse, those for whom he died. None would ever have been brought back to God if Christ had not made a personal effort for them. And it is by this personal work that we can rescue souls. When you see those who are going down to death, you will not rest in quiet indifference and ease. Your heart will go out in sympathy for them and you will reach out to them a helping hand. In the arms of your faith and love, you will bring them to Christ. You will watch over and encourage them and your sympathy and confidence will make it hard for them to fall from their steadfastness. In this work, all the angels of heaven are ready to cooperate. All the resources of heaven are at the command of those who are seeking to save the lost. Angels will help you to reach the most careless and the most hardened. And when one is brought back to God, all heaven is made glad. Seraphs and cherubs touch their golden harps and sing praises to God and the Lamb for their mercy and loving kindness to the children of men. Christ's Object Lessons, page 197. Christ came to the earth to suffer and die, that through the exercise of faith in Him and the appropriation of His merits, we might become laborers together with God. It was the Savior's purpose that after he ascended to heaven to become man's intercessor, his followers should carry on the work that he had begun. Shall the human agents show no special interest in giving the light of the gospel message to those who sit in darkness? There are some who are willing to go to the ends of the earth in order to carry the light of truth to men, but God demands that every soul who knows the truth shall seek to win others to the love of the truth. If we are not willing to make special sacrifices in order to save souls that are ready to perish, how can we be counted worthy to enter into the city of God? Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 103. Wednesday, November 1. Our Excuses. Uncomfortable Confrontations. When Jonah learned of God's purpose to spare the city that notwithstanding its wickedness had been led to repent in sackcloth and ashes, 
he should have been the first to rejoice because of God's amazing grace. But instead, he allowed his mind to dwell upon the possibility of his being regarded as a false prophet. Jealous of his reputation, he lost sight of the infinitely greater value of the souls in that wretched city. The compassion shown by God toward the repentant Ninevites displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. Was not this my saying, he inquired of the Lord, when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Jonah chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Once more he yielded to his inclination to question and doubt, and once more he was overwhelmed with discouragement, losing sight of the interests of others and feeling as if he would rather die than live to see the city spared. In his dissatisfaction, he exclaimed, Now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Prophets and Kings, page 271. The lesson is for God's messengers today, when the cities of the nations are as verily in need of a knowledge of the attributes and purposes of the true God as were the Ninevites of old. Christ's ambassadors are to point men to the nobler world which has largely been lost sight of. According to the teaching of the Holy Scriptures, the only city that will endure is the city whose builder and maker is God. With the eye of faith, man may behold the threshold of heaven, flushed with God's living glory. Through his ministering servants, the Lord Jesus is calling upon men to strive with sanctified ambition to secure the immortal inheritance. He urges them to lay up treasure beside the throne of God. Prophets and Kings, page 274. In the gift of his Son for our redemption, God has shown how high a value he places upon every human soul, and he gives to no man liberty to speak contemptuously of another. We shall see faults and weaknesses in those about us, but God claims every soul as his property, his by creation, and doubly his as purchased by the precious blood of Christ. All were created in his image, and even the most degraded are to be treated with respect and tenderness. God will hold us accountable for even a word spoken in contempt of one soul for whom Christ laid down his life. He who stands as a mouthpiece for God should not utter words which even the majesty of heaven would not use when contending with Satan. We are to leave with God the work of judging and condemning. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, pages 56 and 57. Thursday, November 2. Here am I. Send me. Confused, humiliated, and unable to understand God's purpose in sparing Nineveh, Jonah nevertheless had fulfilled the commission given him to warn that great city. And though the event predicted did not come to pass, yet the message of warning was nonetheless from God, and it accomplished the purpose God designed it should. The glory of His grace was revealed among the heathen, those who had long been sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and brake their bands in sunder. He sent His word, and healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Psalm 107, verses 10, 13, 14, and 20. Prophets and Kings, page 272. Let us remember that while the work we have to do may not be our choice, it is to be accepted as God's choice for us. Whether pleasing or unpleasing, we are to do the duty that lies nearest. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. If the Lord desires us to bear a message to Nineveh, 
it will not be as pleasing to him for us to go to Joppa or to Capernaum. He has reasons for sending us to the place toward which our feet have been directed. At that very place, there may be someone in need of the help we can give. He who sent Philip to the Ethiopian consular, Peter to the Roman centurion, and the little Israelitish maiden to the help of Naaman, the Syrian captain, sends men and women and youth today as his representatives to those in need of divine help and guidance. The Ministry of Healing, pages 472 and 473. Our plans are not always God's plans. He may see that it is best for us and for his cause to refuse our very best intentions as he did in the case of David. But of one thing we may be assured, he will bless and use in the advancement of his cause those who sincerely devote themselves and all they have to his glory. If he sees it best not to grant their desires, he will counterbalance the refusal by giving them tokens of his love and entrusting to them another service. In his loving care and interest for us, often he who understands us better than we understand ourselves refuses to permit us selfishly to seek the gratification of our own ambition. He does not permit us to pass by the homely but sacred duties that lie next us. Often these duties afford the very training essential to prepare us for a higher work. Often our plans fail that God's plans for us may succeed. We are never called upon to make a real sacrifice for God. Many things he asks us to yield to him, but in doing this we are but giving up that which hinders us in the heavenward way. Even when called upon to surrender those things which in themselves are good, we may be sure that God is thus working out for us some higher good. The Ministry of Healing, page 473. For further reading, Messages to Young People, Work in Faith, pages 197 and 198, and The Upward Look, now is the time. Arise and shine. Page 171.